Hi there, I'm on site here at Electronica 2024 and joining me today is Mohamed Halabi, Business Development Manager at TE Connectivity and John Hunter, Antenna Product Marketing Specialist. We're going to be talking about the Internet of Things. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. Hi, Katie. Could you start by giving an introduction to yourselves? Uh, sure. So, first of all, thanks for having us here. Uh, I'm Mohamed Halabi. I have been working in the wireless telecom industry for over 20 years now. Uh, today, I'm a BDM for IoT solutions at TE Connectivity, and I'm mainly responsible for two uh, sectors. Uh, first, I uh, lead the ecosystem partnerships from TE Connectivity side with other uh, major players in the IoT industry. And second, I drive the growth in the EMEA region for IoT solutions. Great, thank you for the introduction. John? Yeah, so I'm John Hunter. I'm Senior Product Marketing Specialist for External Antennas for TE. Uh, so I work in the product marketing function and a lot of my responsibility is the new product introductions, so brand new product releases. But I get involved in uh, lots of other areas of our antenna portfolio from, from years gone by as well. Great, thank you both. And Mohamed, could you quickly introduce, introduce TU Connectivity? Oh, sure. TU Connectivity is a global leader in connectors, sensors, and antennas. Our mission is to build a connected world that is safer, sustainable, and more productive for all humanity. Uh, for many years in a row, uh, we have been recognized as one of the Fortune most admired companies in the world. Uh, so we are a well-settled company. We do have like 95,000 employees worldwide. Uh, located in like 140 countries and our yearly revenue is like uh, 16 billion dollars. The division that is participating in Electronica is the DDN, the Digital Data Networks. This business unit is uh, specialized in developing cutting-edge solutions for IoT and wireless connectivity. And John, I understand T Connectivity is well known for its connectors but you also supply antennas, so can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, certainly. So you're absolutely right. People know TE Connectivity kind of first and foremost as a connector company. We do connectors for practically every you know, uh, application. But we've, we've also done antennas, uh, the company has done antennas for over 30 years. Um, it's just a, a slightly lesser known uh, aspect of the company, I guess. Um, but to kind of address the, the, the strength of TE connectivity in the IoT space, there's been a couple of ac acquisitions recently of uh, antenna companies. Uh, so one of those was the external antenna business from Laird Connectivity. And then there was another recent one with uh, Lynx Technologies being fully acquired. Um, and the two uh, acquisitions plus the existing portfolio that TE already had um, kind of sets us up with a, a very, very strong, uh, not just number of products, but the breadth of products as well. So we're something like 40% of DigiKey's antenna, overall antenna offering, when you combine all of those. But I think the, the real strength is, is the, the, the different capabilities and uh, aspects that each company brought. So we go from incredibly small embedded antennas, which will go inside the smallest wearable IoT device, to three meter tall antennas that will sit on a tower, you know, out in the open. So, and we've got everything in between. And it's, it's the breadth of the portfolio that is now the really interesting bit, I think. So you just il illustrated the, the wide variety of antennas that you guys offer, uh, but how do people choose the right antenna in IoT, Mohammed? Uh, there are many factors that should be taken into consideration when choosing an antenna for an IoT device. So first, we usually understand the, uh, the product requirements. Uh, so every IoT device has its own uh, performance requirements and technical requirements, uh, like the wireless protocol. Is it LoRa? Is it Bluetooth? Uh, is it uh, NB-IoT, 5G? Uh, we need to understand as well the battery capacity, the response time, the throughput, and such stuff. And once we identify all these technical and performance requirements, then we can narrow down which antennas are, are suitable. Uh, second, uh, we have to consider as well the product uh, design. So uh, it's crucial to understand that the whole IoT device play a role in the uh, RF uh, or in the antenna performance. So uh, 
the materials, let's say, does this IoT device has a metallic or non-metallic enclosure, the, the, the size, the, the shape. Uh, as you may notice here, let's say, at Electronica, IoT devices are becoming more and more compact. So there is a need for miniaturized antennas that can fit inside these IoT devices uh, without compromising the efficiency. A third factor is we have to, to uh, evaluate the environment where this IoT device is going to be used. So some IoT device need uh, some IoT devices need the need uh, antennas that can work in uh, uh, harsh outdoor conditions, and usually temperature and humidity also affect the RF performance. So this factor will also decrease or narrow down, let's say, which antennas are, are suitable. A fourth one, we have to decide whether we need a, a, a custom antenna or a, a, an off-the-shelf antenna. So in many IoT applications, an off-the-shelf antenna is uh, sufficient. However, when we, we need a specific uh, product requirements, uh, we, we can go for a custom antenna. Uh, for instance, uh, if there is no space inside the IoT device uh, to mount, let's say, a, a, an off-the-shelf antenna, then in this case, we can make use of the enclosure of that device. We can print a 3D antenna using the uh, laser direct structuring technology and mount this antenna on the enclosure of that device. And fifth, the last one, we always advise our customer to start thinking about uh, antenna design in the very beginning. Uh, antennas cannot be added at the end of the uh, design cycle because solving antenna certifications uh, is very uh, time consuming and even very expensive. So picking up this point you've just made about certifications, what kind of certifications are out there? Can you talk us through it? Uh, actually, there are uh, many types of certifications. Okay? There are three main levels of certifications. The first one is the uh, regulatory approval or regulatory certifications. So usually these certifications are issued by a governmental body uh, to ensure that the IoT device uh, is not going to interfere with other uh, radio service and also uh, to ensure that this IoT device or the energy radiated by this IoT device meet the safety standard for public health. So here we're talking about FCC in, uh, in the US, we're talking about EC in Europe and such, such certifications. The second category of certifications is like the industry uh, standard certifications. So uh, these certifications confirm that the IoT device meet these, let's say, standard uh, uh, industry standard uh, requirement, uh, like PTCRB, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and, and, and such stuff. Uh, they have to meet certain criteria in terms of protocol, in terms of security, in terms of uh, network compatibility, and, and such stuff. The third level of certifications, and this is mainly for cellular, this is called the carrier uh, certifications. Here, the, the MNO, the, the mobile network operator, is the one who's issuing, let's say, this certification. MNO, I mean like Verizon, uh, Telefonica, AT&T, uh, T-Mobile. They issue such certification in order to allow these IoT devices to connect to their networks uh, so that they don't make, let's say, uh, noise or problems or interference. Thank you for that, Mohammed. We've talked a little bit about how people can pick the right antenna in IoT, uh, just talked about certifications. So, John, what do you see being the future for antennas and what are you anticipating when it comes to antenna design in IoT? So the, the future, I think, is, is governed quite a lot by the uh, frequencies that are available. So we've seen 5G uh, in recent years be expanded. Uh, recently, or in the past few years, we've had our, the rollout of Wi-Fi 6E and then Wi-Fi 7, uh, and that is that's allocating more frequencies for people to use. Um, so that expands the options people have, uh, the range of frequencies. And once you go higher up in frequencies, you get more bandwidth available. Uh, you get more users able to access the network simultaneously, uh, faster data rates, things like that. So the frequency has a lot to do with it. Uh, we, we, in some cases, see it go the other way, where uh, very niche, smaller, lower frequencies in 5G, for example, around 450 megahertz, they're, they're kind of opening up for low power applications. Um, but a lot of it is governed by 
what frequency that antenna is able to operate in. Um, the other one, uh, or another one, is the, the physical size of the antenna. Antennas are very constrained by physics. You cannot just take an antenna that needs to be a meter long, make it 10 centimeters long, and it works the same. It just doesn't work like that. So um, inside an IoT device, you've got one that's quite space constrained. Um, you know, you've got a small area to work with, but then you've also got batteries, electronic components, and these have influences on the, the types of antennas and the size of antennas you can put in there. And then you've got, I mean, Electronica is a really good example today where this morning, this was an empty warehouse. Now there's, I don't know, 10,000 people outside uh, milling about in the showground. And that puts quite a lot of strain on a system when you go from zero activity to heavy activity. Everyone in here is on their phones, they're accessing emails. Uh, so bringing connectivity to the users and to that indoor traffic is, is quite important, I would say, as well. I think it's a very uh, common scenario where you're in a place like this, you're in a stadium, and you're trying to connect, and you go, oh, I've got no signal. Yep. So it's, it's interesting to see how you're thinking about that from the internet yeah, side. I mean, it, the, uh, the viewers of this will not be able to see, but you know, inside this building, this is a metal frame. You know, I'm looking around, and there's, a, there's a, a roof structure that's metal, the walls are metal, or they'll be thick materials, and uh, cellular signals, 5G, for example, doesn't penetrate very well inside buildings. So one of the solutions is to bring the connectivity indoors, if you like. So you provide, whether it be Wi-Fi or it be 5G or cellular, you bring it indoors to that traffic, uh, rather than relying on the traditional infrastructure that might be outside in these, these locations. Yeah, let's, let's explore this a little further. So on, on the topic of there being so many people around in this kind of building, what do you think the solution is to resolving it? Maybe you can answer that, Mohammed. Ah, yeah, sure. So the most common solution for to cover that to, to manage let's say indoor coverage is the dust, the distributed antenna systems, which is a key component of the, the IBS, the in-building solutions. Uh, in fact, the dust uh, address two main uh, solve two main problems: the uh, cellular coverage uh, challenge and uh, cellular traffic challenge. So the cellular traffic challenge is the one that we just mentioned now. Uh, that happened in every crowded places, uh, like shopping malls, uh, stadia, and campuses, and, and uh, such stuff. And the mobile uh, uh, coverage challenge that usually occurs when the signal is unable to penetrate, let's say, a specific skyscrapers, towers, or, or high-rise building. Uh, due to many reasons, one of them is like the, the uh, glass cladding or the high frequency. Uh, so, uh, at TE connectivity, we do have uh, the right antennas for this uh, uh, for this DAS solution, and our antennas have been installed in the most prestigious sites worldwide. And the most important thing that uh, our antennas uh, support all the frequency bands, all of the cellular frequency bands, and all of the mission critical communications as well. You both spoken about this um, providing this example of indoor coverage, but what about when you're outdoors or you're on the move, how do you tackle that issue? So that, that was um, one of the strategic acquisitions that T Connectivity made was the external antenna business from Lead Connectivity. Um, and that was just over three years ago now. So uh, with that existing business came an existing portfolio of um, infrastructure antennas as well as antennas for on the move, so vehicle antennas. And since the business or the capabilities come into TE Connectivity, we've also developed new products. So we had an existing portfolio and we've developed new products, uh, which are kind of the next generation antennas. So 5G that I mentioned, Wi-Fi 7 that I mentioned, they're all enabled for the uh, top uh, frequency allocations of those, those frequencies. So the antenna can be in place now and it can be in place for five years and still work. So. Um, yeah, we have a, we've got a broad portfolio for vehicle antennas uh, from single you know, traditional sort of whip antennas, the old school uh, whip that you might see in a, an old car or a police car. It's out to now, we have up to 14 antennas effectively encased in one unit. Uh, they usually cover um, a mix of cellular, uh, Wi-Fi, GNSS, and 
then there's Bluetooth and VHF and other frequencies that get mixed in depending on the application. And then we, we also have quite a, a broad range, again, from these other acquisitions where we now have um, all of the infrastructure antennas as well. So if your vehicle is moving down the road, but you need to be communicating from that vehicle to a base station, for example, we have the antennas for the uh, vehicle, we have the antennas for the base station or the tower outside the vehicle. So we've, we've kind of got that breadth of portfolio now that means from the smallest device to not the largest, there are some things we don't do, but you know, the IoT space, large antennas, we, we have that full portfolio. So yeah, fixed out to on the move or things that stay outside for five, 10 years, we have all of them really. Thank you for that overview. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your partnership with DigiKey and how it supports your customers? Yeah, so D DigiKey is really important to TE. Um, uh, we work with, with DigiKey on a number of product lines. Antennas is just one of them, but it, it, it provides customers with that direct access and that very quick access to either a small number of antennas. You know, if they're just doing a trial or a, a rollout or a test, they may only need one to two antennas. It gives them that option to have that in a very short space of time, or they might want 100 antennas for an actual rollout of a, uh, you know, an actual uh, product rollout. So DigiKey provides that very quick, very rapid uh, delivery to customers and the broader reach that DigiKey also has. Before we finish, is there a final message you guys you guys would like to share uh, for those at Electronica? Uh, yep. So usually in the IoT, it's uh, very important, let's say, to partner with a, an antenna manufacturer who can not only provide the antennas, but also who's able, let's say, to help in the integration and in tuning these antennas. So in, in brief, come to TE and you will be in good hands. All right. Well, thank you both for being here and for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you.